What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for an episode of What the Fitness. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm. This week, we have Mark Hyman back on the show. We're just gonna change the name of What the Fitness to What the Hyman, since apparently he's on every other week saying dumb stuff. But let's see what he's saying this week. So this is an Instagram post and he says, did you know that artificial sweeteners actually trick your metabolism into thinking sugar is on its way? This causes your body to pump out insulin, the fat storage hormone, which lays down more belly fat, leaving you hungrier and craving even more sugar and starchy carbs. The more you know. Oh man, such a really interesting mechanism that he's proposing there. If only we had numerous human randomized control trials where they give people artificial sweeteners and look to see if they get, oh wait, they do. This is an example of someone taking a mechanism, by the way, the mechanism is actually BS too, but he's taking a mechanism and then going, well, if A equals B and B equals C and C equals D, then D equals E. Uh, that's not how things work in metabolism. Fortunately, we have this thing called the scientific method, where if we have a hypothesis, we can actually Test it. Crazy, right, Mark? So what happens when they give humans in randomized control trials artificial sweeteners? They don't gain weight. In fact, in a few trials where they had them either drink a couple of diet sodas per day versus water, they actually lost weight. In fact, a recent meta-analysis showed that on balance, consuming artificial sweeteners causes a little bit of weight loss. So please explain to me, Dr. Hyman, how the hell your hypothesis can be true. Oh, by the way, there's also a meta-analysis showing they don't affect glycemia either. So your whole insulin theory just right out the window. This is the guy who likes to take rodent studies where they feed ridiculous amounts of stuff and say, oh, look, it triggered this thing in the brain. Well, whoop de do. At the end of the day, what do we care about? His end claim is that artificial sweeteners are going to cause you to lay down belly fat and be hungrier. That is his main claim. But he goes through this convoluted logic of insulin and cravings and all these sorts of things to distract you and you go, oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes it. Except we studied it. It's been studied numerous times. There are no studies I'm aware of where they give artificial sweeteners and people gain weight. There are correlation studies where they look at obese people and find that they consume greater amounts of diet soda. Again, whoop de do. When they do the human randomized control trials, either they don't see any differences in weight or they see decreases in weight. Unless you'd like to argue that artificial sweeteners are somehow fat burning, that means they're eating less, which indicates that they're having greater satiety, meaning that artificial sweeteners don't make you hungry. Oh my God. Actual human outcome data. You know, the stuff we actually care about. So you can take your mechanisms and shove them where the sun don't shine, as far as I'm concerned. Am I saying that you should eat artificial sweeteners? No. Am I saying that you can't lose weight if you don't eat artificial sweeteners? No. Am I saying that it's impossible that artificial sweeteners might make some people have some cravings? No. I'm saying on average, based on the randomized control trials in humans and meta-analyses, there is no evidence to suggest that they are causative for increasing hunger or causing weight gain. If anything, they might cause a little bit of weight loss. Now people ask me, Lane, why are you defending artificial sweeteners? What harm is this causing? He's just trying to get people to eat more naturally. Misinformation always has unintended consequences, regardless of what the intention is. And I am sick of people hiding behind intentions. You know what intentions are? It's the metric that we judge ourselves by. You know what we judge other people by? Their actions. Actions are what matter. So when you spread misinformation, that is a negative action. Now, what might be the unintended consequence of such misinformation? It might cause someone to say, well, I'm not gonna have artificial sweeteners because they're worse for me, but I, you know, I just can't seem to stop drinking Coke. I know I can't quit it, so I, you know, they're, wor they're just as bad, so I might as well just drink the real thing. On every post I make about artificial sweeteners, there is at least one person who says, I lost 25, 50, 75, 100 pounds, and the biggest thing I did was cut out 
sugar sweetened beverages and replace them with artificially sweetened beverages. Are you going to tell me that that person is worse off? Then it's also like, I got to throw this in here. I can't stand the privilege. You couldn't possibly have something that tastes good that isn't bad for you because if you did, you would just be a decrepit human being. Does anybody else get that vibe from these influencers like Hyman? It's like, if you're not eating that sucks, somehow they just look down on you as this human being with no self-control and you aren't all about health. Why can't there be something that might not have any negative downsides to consuming or minimal downsides? And again, it's all about what you're comparing it to. Are diet sodas better than water? Well, I mean, some of the randomized control trials might suggest that it actually could cause a little bit of weight loss, but I would say no, it's not better than water. I'm not saying people should drink them instead of water. But is it better than sugar sweetened beverages? Hell yes. Hyman, I would encourage you to stop the misinformation. Actually, don't stop because it's great content for my YouTube channel. You're just gonna keep spewing out the same old shit. Because at the end of the day, people like this don't care about getting the right answer. They just care about parroting their rhetoric over and over and over because at this point, they've sold products, they've sold books, and they've sold themselves to you and sold their souls and to go back and admit that they could have been wrong about something they feel like will undo all that. So they can't. But that's why they're not scientists. They're politicians. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Links to studies are in the description. Go let Hyman know he can find me for a debate anytime he won't. All right, guys, catch you next week.